Dad. Dad can be described in many ways. I think the word that seems to be the first thing that comes to my mind is generous. I feel like one of the hardest transitions in retirement for mom and dad will be the lessened ability to give monetarily as they have in the past. My early days are a fog in my head, but there are highlights that stick out. My dad would travel anywhere he could to preach the gospel. Even as poor as Tom's turkey, he would give his last dollar to the work of the Lord. I remember one day, the Greyhound bus let a man out in front of our house in Darden. It was the missionary, Elder Bro Brother Barber from Brazil. I don't know if Dad was even pastoring at the time. It didn't even matter. Once I remember him letting me pick the guitar in a little church called Spring Creek. I can't play a guitar today, and I sure couldn't back then. We worked on the farm for our food. The untimely passing of my grandfather provided us with a home base to survive on. If you come by, bring your work clothes. Dad will find a job for you to do. Many of you, if not all, have benefited in some form from his strong work ethics and the study of the scriptures. I'm sure there are churches on every continent in the world that has in some way benefited from his leadership. In 1976, before we left Darden, Tennessee, we experienced the tragic loss of my brother, Mark Daniel, which changed our lives forever. When I was 12 years old, he became the pastor of Columbia, Tennessee. From our first home under the porch of the church to the house on Highland Avenue, Dad has always pushed forward, forward spiritually and physically. Probably thousands of preachers from all walks of life have ministered to us across the various pulpits we've had in our local assembly. During these teen years, Dad took me fishing, hunting, taught me to work on cars, planted gardens, raised animals, built buildings. The term should be the Henry of all trades. At age 17, in a torn, torn decision, I'm sure, he signed the papers to allow me to enlist, early enlist, in the U.S. Air Force. At the age of 18, he performed my wedding to the love of my life. When he was 37, I made him a first-time grandfather. In 1989, I made my way back to Columbia, Tennessee. Dad has guided me both spiritually, financially, to get me to where I am today. Since then, he has led the building of the shed and two buildings on the site where our church calls home now. Now, he has made the t very tough decision to turn the mantle over to the next generation. May he and mom live in the blessed peace of God's will. Only if we keep our souls consecrated will this house stay consecrated. Amen. We have always taught our children to respect the house of God, to love the house of God. It's not a place to be eating and drinking. Amen. It's not a place for Kool-Aid and crackers. Amen. This is the house of God. Mom. Mom is the example of a virtuous woman. The early years we were poor but never hungry. Mom is not an inside person, but yet still the perfect mother. Her soup, spaghetti, and peach cobbler can't be beat. She's worked harder than most modern men ever will. Gardening, fencing, painting, picking up nails. If Dad needed something, she was there. We used to raise a batch of chickens for, for the freezer every year. I remember one year, in particular, we killed probably a hundred at one time. Dip and pluck, dip and pluck. I'm sure our plucking wasn't that good. Mom stood over the sink all day. After I was grown, she admitted that she couldn't keep up with us. She had to wash the fly larvae off some before processing them for the freezer. Food was not a thing to waste. Dad tells of coming home to fresh squirrel. Mom can kill her own supper if the need be. After traveling the territory, church to church, we ended up living in town in Columbia. 
Mom has been an exemplary pastor's wife. <clears throat> she loves blood relatives fiercely, but loves her church family as much as she loves her children. All the current members and those that have went their separate ways still get her prayers, tears, and assistance any time she hears a hint of a need. Mom's not healthy as she once was, but in a conversation I had with her last night, she was telling me a project she'd done this week, making room for all her friends and family to be welcome to the last Memorial Day weekend as a pastor's wife. Love you, Mom and Dad. My dad. When I was a little child, I remember my dad bringing me flowers sometimes when he brought flowers to Mom. Sometimes he would take me to class with him when he was going to college. I remember pretending to stay asleep when arriving home late from church service so he would carry me into the house. I remember playing in the creek while Dad prepared the fields to plant. One fond memory was waking up on Christmas morning and me and Mitchell hiding the presents so Mom and, would, and Dad would think we didn't get any, only to realize later that they were watching us from down the hallway. Oh, and one time I was told to go get in the car because we were leaving to go to church somewhere. This was way before seat belts and car seats were required. I decided I wanted to get some fresh peanuts that our neighbor had just harvested, later to realize that I had been left. My parents had gone to get gas and had to pass back by the house to go to church. They saw me running up the driveway crying, and that was when they realized they had left me at home. I remember how hard he worked to get his pilot's license and flying places with him, going fishing and riding in the little boat he had. He got me a neat black Mustang as my first car. One year, I wanted a fur coat for Christmas. I begged so much, he wrapped a stick of firewood up as a gag gift. I got the fur coat, but quickly realized that the fur got on everything, so he traded the fur coat for a leather coat. This past year was the toughest in my life. My parents were there every step of the way, making sure they made life as easy as possible for me and my family. He has always made me feel safe and loved, and I will always be my dad's baby girl. I love you, Dad. My mom. When I was a little child, I remember mom working hard on the farm. She loves the outdoors, gardening, and taking care of the farm animals. I remember mom going out and shooting a squirrel and making squirrel dumpling for supper. She taught me how to can vegetables to cook and to care for the home. I remember the family gathered around breaking green beans to can and shucking corn to put in the freezer. One memory is mom picking up the down rows after dad has harvested the corn. She doesn't have hobbies, but she enjoys reading a good book when time allows. Whatever project my dad is working on, mom is always there by his side, handing him tools, picking up nails, and fixing a meal for whoever might be helping dad that day. One memory we love to tell is the time mom made turtle soup. We were in revival and the evangelist showed up every evening for supper. One day, Dad was going to be gone all day, so Mom assumed the guests wouldn't show up, and she made turtle soup. Come supper time, they were knocking on the door. Mom set them down at the table and served them. They raved about how good the soup was. That night after church, Uncle Bob asked them how they liked the turtle soup. You should have seen the looks on their faces. Mom loves her children and grandchildren, and will do whatever she can to make sure they have what they need and that they feel loved. She loves nothing more than having her family close by. When God picked me out a mo mother, he gave me the best. I love you, Mom. My dad has lived a life of quiet dignity. He has quietly sacrificed and has given without others knowing. He has repeatedly and faithfully given the benefit of the doubt and shown mercy and grace to those who have wronged him and his family. For his entire Christian life, he has fiercely loved God and his word without once doubting or looking back. Another quality my dad has is he has always been willing to try something without fearing failure. He has always been there whenever anyone has needed him. My dad 
is a giant of a man. My mom is a strong woman who has always been willing to follow my dad without doubting him. My mom loves her family fiercely and will move heaven and earth to be there for her family. A preacher's wife is a life of hidden tears and pains behind the scenes, followed by the need to step out in front of others with a smile and love for those who mistreat her and her family. It's a life of personal sacrifices only revealed to God. My mom has lived this life with grace. She has physically worked hard going far beyond God's requirements because of her love for God and her devotion to my dad. My dad is who he is because of my mom. I love you, mom and dad. Thank you.